Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a lot of requests for this one the past couple of weeks. We're going to do uh, um, Guns N' Roses' new one as of this lesson being fun. If you're watching this 20 years down the road, not so new, I guess. Uh, but we're going to learn how to play hard school today. So this is really kind of some, sounds a little bit like old school uh, Guns N' Roses. So it's, it's a fun song to play. Got some great guitar work in it as well. Um, so we've got our work cut out for us. Um, now. Before I get into it though, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring the notification bell, of course, so you know we release a new video and all the good stuff. You can help me out here on YouTube, like and comment on the videos. That really does help. Um, and share the videos, that helps a lot too. Um, and please, if you, if you want to really support what I do here on YouTube with all these song lessons, the best way to do it is actually join my Guitar Academy. And you'll see a link to that in the description below. And my Guitar Academy contains all of my guitar courses. Um, from complete beginner courses to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. Uh, and you also get personalized support from me there. So please click the link and, and go check it out. I really appreciate it. All right, so let's jump into the track. We are tuned down, as per Guns N' Roses regulations, we are tuned down a half step. So every string, tuned down a half step. Uh, you'll see those notes in the description, but if you want to call them out real quick, it's just an E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. Um, so that's, you'll see those notes in the description as well. But so that's the tuning we're going to be in, and the tuning you're going to need to play in to match this lesson, but also the original recording. Let's jump into this intro. So we have, for a lot of this song, we have Slash and um, Richard Fortas doing uh, similar riffs, and then with slight differences between them. So uh, for, there's going to be a lot of like rhythm guitar parts we're going to have to do. Uh, multiple things for. So that intro is one of those things we're talking about. So we have a rhythm guitar part um, and a lead guitar part to this intro. So the rhythm guitar part first is this. <laughs> So, and then the vocals come in there. That is very similar to the verse riff, but it's slightly different than how it's played when the vocals come in. So we're going to start here with this power chord, the C power chord. It's a C flat power chord now. Let's not get into that. We'll just call it a C. Um, so third fret there in the A, power chord off the third fret of the A string. So then take it down to the second fret. Then go to the A power chord. And you're going to just really lightly hit the third fret there on the low E string. So can I hit that A string, A power chord twice, but hit that third fret really light, lightly and kind of palm you. So it's... Take that over to an open E power chord. From there we have this... So that little part right there is different than well, how we play the verse later on. So it's, it feels like the verse riff, but it ain't. So we have so we have this we have the second fret, kind of some muted hits in between it. Then go up to the third fret, hit a couple times. Back down to the second fret a couple times. Back to the third fret a couple times. So we have this kind of palm muted, and then. We're going to end that riff pulling off to a zero on the A string. So we have this. Let's repeat that. All right, so that's Richard Fortas' uh, part. And Slash on top of that is doing this. So some double stops here. We're at the uh, eighth fret there on the B and the ninth fret on the G. Hit that a few times. You're going to be doing adding some vibrato to it too. 
Then take it down a half step to the seven on the B, eight on the D. Throw this. Then we'll have this. So that goes 10, eight, 10 on the B string. And go back to the eight with a slight bend on it. Then over to the nine on the G, pick that nine again, and go back to the eight on the B. So with this. Then jump up here to the 12th fret. Hit it a couple times. Down to 11. Back to the 12. Hit each one of those like a couple times each. And then jump back here to, down to the 8th fret there on the B. So we have this. So far. And now kind of start over again. Except when we get to this G, we don't go back up to the B string. It just goes 7 on the G and then back to the 9 on the G to just resolve it to come up for the core of the verse. I'm sorry. So all together for that slash is part in the intro. Uh, you're going to hear a little some slight little overdubs and layers kind of in the background right there you hear something at the very end of that uh, intro uh, you're also going to hear this in over the like in the outro section the outro chorus uh, we're gonna you know skip those it's just kind of filler um, but uh, kind of this is really what they would play live really all right so then we get to the verse now there's two different parts going here um, between Richard Fortas and Slash they're very similar and this is how Richard Fortas plays. Well, I believe one of them is playing it this way. All right, so what's going on there? So it starts the same that we did in the intro there. So it looks like the same riff. So you get all the way down to that E power chord. Now here's where the notes are different from where they were in the intro. We had this, still have the two, three, two, three. Here, instead of pulling off two to zero, we're gonna pull off five to zero on the A string. So basically that's the difference there uh, for Richard Forrest at least. So All right, so we have that going on, and he just repeats that. All right, now, Slash is obviously playing with him. He does something different, though. He plays the same thing. Until here. So he goes. So he still does that two, then three, hit that a couple times. And he goes down to the second fret as well, but instead of coming back up to the third fret, then doing that pull off, instead of going back up to the third fret, so instead of going, he does this. So it's the place of going back to that three, he goes over to the major third of that. He harmonizes that note at the second fret on the A string. So we have this. And he does that same pull off five to zero on the A string. So we have Slash's part. I'm repeat that. So that complements going with this. And they together they come together to create the verse. So uh, so it's this little thing to hear, but you hear that harmony come in, in there. It's almost like this. 
but you can do it like that if you want, if you have like one guitar. All right, all right. All right, now, after a couple times through that riff, we have an extra harmony line that's added on top, uh, which looks like this. Leads us into, it's kind of like, it almost feels like when this part comes in, it's almost like a pre-chorus. It's really kind of building the, the, um, the tension up for the chorus. So we have this harmony line that comes in is this. So that's seven on the A string, a couple times, a few times, then up to nine, and then seven on the low E. You can, you can play that with your index finger. I'm just being lazy with it and thumbing it. So we have this. And then come over to the uh, D string, the seventh fret, and play. So we have this, uh, sorry. Kind of pulling off seven to five on the D, then back to seven. And then you play the fifth fret there on the D with a slight bend on it. Then resolve that to the eight, the, I'm sorry, the seventh fret on the A, and then hit that again. Go back to that five on the D. So this. Jump up here now to the ninth fret there on the D. So it's kind of similar to the... Well, you did that earlier, but it's it's here on the D string, the ninth fret. Nine, eight, nine, down to 12. I'm sorry, down to five. So, it's... so, so far away this for the harmonies part. And then it kind of starts the same way again. So now when we get to this um, seven the second time through on the A string, it just goes down to five and back to that seven and that leads to the chorus. Chorus, once again, we have two guitar parts. They both do almost exactly the same thing except for one chord. And um, so here's how Richard Fortas will play. Um, the chorus. Um, so we basically have this power chord, E power chord up here at the 7th fret there on the A string. Down to the B power chord here at the 2nd. Then the open A power chord. So it's that a couple of times. Then we go back to that B power chord, hit it a couple of times, back up to the C power chord, the third fret. So it's so two, three, two, and then back to three. And then here, Richard Forrest goes over and plays this G power chord. This is where slash deviates from what. Um, his his chorus riff. So, but Fortis will go down to this G power chord of the third fret on low E. Then down to an open E power chord. You can still he might he might still go to that. I don't even. It's an E power chord regardless. Make that low E in there. So we have this. You can get the high E's in there if you want, and then repeat that. Now, what the slash do different? So he plays the same riff. Right here, instead of going down to the, the G power chord, sl slash goes, he plays the D power chord there. So while Fortis is doing this, let's come together and create that. Chord. So D power chord, then up to the E power chord. And then we get the open B and the high E in there too, so we have this. Sorry. Repeat.
All right. Then we have this little quick little interlude uh, that's played by Slash. It's being played in um, Richard Fortas continues his version of the chorus riff under this. It looks like this. So this is what Slash is doing over it. <laughs> All right, so it's a pretty quick little thing. Uh, there's some quick little licks thrown in there. So we have this. So we're starting at the fifth fret there on the D string. So slight bend. A lot of times when you play this fifth fret here in this lick, he doesn't just play it flat. He's gonna add a little bit of a slight downward bend to it just to give it some kind of a, kind of a little emphasis. So we have this. So that. Fifth fret there. I'm not going to call out the little emphasis he does every time. You guys know it's there every time. So that fifth fret on the D, and then then seven on the A, and seven on the low E string. And then we go back up five seven on the A to a five on the D, back to seven on the A. So. And then we just do that seven, five, seven on the A, over to five on the D, then seven, five, seven on the E again. So we have this so far. Now here, though, we have a little bit of quicker lick thrown in. But it's got the same inning, so it's like, Instead of doing this now, that, we have this. So that's that fifth fret again on the D. There's a quick little kind of 16th note. It's right here at the pulling off 7 to 5 on the um, A string over to 7 on the low D string. So, and then the rest of that lick. The same that we did before. So it was just instead of this, we have this instead. Okay, so then other than that, it's the same riff done twice. So this. All right, and now it sounds like we're going to be starting the same thing again, but he kind of ends it different. So we have this. So that's that. so we're basically starting the phrase again with that same beginning there with a little quick little pull off and down to the seventh fret on the low E. So then back up five seven and here is where he adds variation. He jumps over to the 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 uh, seventh fret there on the D slide bend on. Down, down to that five on the D. So with this. And from here, we have this little ending. So. So, okay. I'm sorry. There it is. So this, like, these things are kind of hard when you're just kind of doing it in the middle of just like starting and stopping. So after this, that little bend of the seven down to the five. This little ending is a, a quick little legato lick. So that's the five on the uh, D plus seven, five on the A, and seven on the low E. And then you can basically go through the same notes, but just pick them a lot slower. And then we're going to end it with this. So that's going to be hammering five to seven on the A string, back to five, then seven, five, seven on the low E string, S slight bend on the third fret of the low E, down the open E. So that open E, then I'm going to hit the 
uh, kind of open B and high E together. And then do that kind of twice. So all together for that. Then we get to the verse, so it goes back through the exact same verse section, so nothing's different than what we did before, um, and then the same chorus as well, too. Um, now, coming out of that, out of the chorus, we get to the solo section. So before I play Slash's main solo, I'll show you the chords um, that go on underneath it. So this is going to be underneath kind of the heavy part, not just not the slide part. We'll, we'll take a look at the, the chords underneath the slide part after I do the main solo. So we're going to take care of like the, the non-slide part of the solo first. So this is the rhythm guitar part for that. Alright, so that is just the chorus riff, so Richard Fortas's version of the chorus riff done twice. And then after that we get to this little F sharp uh, power, we kind of goes to this F sharp, changes the key real quick. So that's just that um, F sharp power chord off the low E string. Then over to the C power chord at the third fret of the E string, then back to the F sharp. Then we have this little bass line in there. It goes to open E twice, then one, the first fret, and then, then back to that F sharp power chord. So it's. Back to the F sharp, and then that, hit that key. C again, C power chord. And then it quick goes back to the F sharp just a couple times, and then to the open E. That that kind of leads us into the slide guitar part. So now I'm just gonna play Slash's main solo for you, show you how to play it through that note for note, and then we'll get to the uh, slide guitar parts. <laughs> All right, so that's really kind of the first half of the solo. We have this whole second half of the section where it's done on slide guitar. So I'm going to break those up because I don't have the uh, ability to just grab a slide and do all that stuff real quick. don't have a whole set of roadies to help me with this. All right, so we're going to start with just the, uh, the uh, this is really kind of just the main solo anyway. So we have this. <laughs> So that's gonna start with um, really a triple stop. So he's, you would think he's just playing the 12th fret there across the G and the B, but he gets that high E in there as well. So the, the very first time you hit that, you're gonna hit, hit three strings across the 12th fret, um, uh, across the B, the G, B, and the high E. Then we're gonna come down to the D string and pull off 14 to 12. Over to 14 on the A string. Then go back up 12, 14 on the D. And then now just to the double stops at the 12th fret across the B and the G. Back to the 14th fret there on the D. So we have this. From there we have this, which is just 12, 14 on the D, back to those double stops of the 12th fret, 
And then go 14, 12, 14 on the D band. So that whole opening right there. Up to speed. Now from there we have this. So these are more double stops here at the 14th fret now across the B and the G. So you kind of got to bend them down to so kind of pull them towards the floor. So you bend them and then just play the normal 14 without the bend down to the 12 double stops. So play this. So you do that going between those two just a couple times. Play this. Then you're going to play just the 14th fret there on the G string by itself. And then jump up to the 12th fret on the high E string. It's with us. So from there, when you get to this 12th fret on the high E string, hit a couple times. And then you're going to bend the 15th fret there on the B string. And then grab the uh, note on the high E at the 12th fret again. Hit it a couple times and then play 15, 12 on the B. So all together. All right, now from there, so. goes into some fun stuff. So we basically have this bend of the 15th fret there on the B string. And then you're going to roll from the 12th fret on the high E to the 12th fret on the B. And you're going to do that a couple times. So then you're going to quickly grab the 15th fret on the high E string into a bend at the uh, 15th fret of the B. So with this. And then grab the 15th fret, I mean, sorry, the 12th fret on the high E. So, and that sets us up for these licks that are coming up right here. So, so far we have this. So, uh, I need that bend there. And you can kind of grab that 12th fret real quick. We're going to have this. So what he's doing, you're going to pick the 15th fret by itself. Got a quick little staccato lick. And then we're going to pick the 15th again, pull off to 12, and then pull off 15 to 12 on the beat. So that's the lick. We go. And he does that lick twice. But it's really, really quick. I mean, you can almost get away with just by just doing the straight pull-offs. But he does have that extra hit before he does the pull-offs. And then you go back to the, after you've done that like twice, you play 15th a couple times on the high string. So. And then we're going to, uh, after that, like, we have this. So this kind of just goes down. It's a lot of, you know, when you're doing these kind of like really blues-based stuff, there's a lot of things in there that are just kind of, uh, what's to say? There's a lot of licks that are different, but relatively alike. So it's hard to kind of like memorize these types of things, note for note, just because of the style of playing. But... Um, so we're going to play 12th fret on the high E string, down to 15, pull off to 12 on the B, and then there's a bend and release at the 14th on the G. Pull off to 12, 
Oh, to 14 on the D. Then you're gonna play the, those double stops of the 14th fret across the B and the G. Then the double stops of the 12th fret. Over to the 14th fret there on the D, and then back to those double stops of the 12th. So we have this. Now when you play those double stops, you can slightly pull them towards the ground if you want. Uh, then we, after you get there, you pick the hit the double stops again, and then we play 14, 12 on the D, 14 on the A, back 12, 14 on the D. So that whole ending lick. All right, next uh, little section of the solo. So we're gonna start here on the, um, this is when the rhythm guitar part went to the. Kind of did that F, F sharp to C um, thing. So we're gonna play. We're gonna play two, zero, on the low E, then go to the open A. So, and then on the A string, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. So it's just zero, three, zero, three, zero. So we have this. All right, from there, we have this. We're gonna play the second fret there on the D. Then play four, two, four. Then jump up and grab double stops here at the fifth fret. You can just do it with your, your ring finger, just bar across the fifth fret of the G and the B. So you play those double stops there, then take them down one fret to the fourth fret, then the second fret there across the G and the B. You can just do it with the uh, index finger. So we play that five, four, two, and then do the four, two again. Over to four on the um, D string, then back to those double stops of the second fret. Then you pick those double stops one more time there at the second fret, and then you're gonna do this little lick, which is pulling off four to two on the G, and resolving it on the fourth fret there on the D. That's where it is. So. All right, so right from there, we go into this. All right, so right out of that. This lick, we're gonna slide into the sixth fret there on the, on the G string. Play six there on the G, then play five on the B, roll over to five on the high E string. And to the seventh fret there on the B string. Then play the fifth fret on the B, and then a series of bends and a bend and releases at the seventh fret on the high string. So, then pull out off to five, then over to seven on the B string. So we this. Then play five, seven there on the uh, B string, kind of setting up the last lick here. It's a cool lick there. So we have, we're pulling off the, uh, Eight to five on the high E string, and then seven to four on the B, and then five to two on the G. And then play four on the D, and four on the G. So.
All right, and then that takes us into the slide guitar solo. So before I do the actual slide guitar part, I'm going to take a look at uh, Richard Fortas' uh, chords underneath. So here is that. back into the course. So um, basically, a little clean setting here. Now he plays this, it's a G major. I'm doing it as a bar chord. Because you hear this, you just, he kind of picks across from that D note to a B. So instead of going, he might be doing that. Which you can just build it like a normal kind of G open chord and then play that second, um, second string that holding the uh, D note down and then pick it up and pick the B string open B. So you could be doing that or you could just kind of play a, uh, a G major bar chord standard and then kind of pick across it like that without having to move anything. So we have that G major chord, just a full bar of the third fret, fourth fret on the G, fifth on the D, fifth on the A. And then that makes it very easy to chant trans uh, to move to the next chord, which is a C minor chord. Um, obviously, we're two and a half steps, or everything I'm saying is actually a half step lower. Um, we're gonna move over here, so just move everything down one string. So now it's a five string chord. So you have that third fret there on the A string, fifth fret on the D and G, fourth fret on the B. All right, so it's basically between those two chords, kind of pick across. like three times. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this down to a B flat major chord. So that's just the first fret there on the A, third fret across the D, G, and the B. And I'm kind of picking across those. And then move it up to the C major chord, just two frets higher, same shape. This is a slash moves into the higher um, kind of part, uh, slide parts. So, that done three times into a B flat to a C. And then as the slash gets to the, the higher parts, we go back to the G and C minor progression. Uh, but this one's just going to use the open G cowboy chord. Just hit it once and let it ring. There's a little bit more grit on the tone too, so I can change our just like that just into that C minor chord and just kind of strum it across it. So back to the G, back to the C minor. And then back to the G. So after the third time of playing that G, now we're going to start leading into the chorus. This is the end of the solo. So we're going to go come up here and grab maybe with just a little bit of distortion on it first. Just a power chord, this F power chord off the eighth fret of the A string. Then the seventh fret, third fret, and open A. So we have this F, E, C. Just play that a little bit with that ring. Kick back in the distortion a little bit more. And we're going to do this. So that's going to do that same 8, 7, 
three, and now instead of going to the open A, we're gonna go up to this D power chord at the uh, fifth fret. And start doing kind of an eighth note downstroke, muted downstroke feel on it. And then move it up to the sixth fret there. Just move it up a fret. And then that leads us back into the chorus. All right, so now let me take a look at, uh, I'm gonna play through Slash's uh, slide guitar parts here. Mental note, I suck at slide guitar. I do not play a slide guitar a lot. I fully admit this all the time, so um, this ain't gonna be perfect, but here you go. <laughs> So, um, yeah, slides are not my thing, so it's quite obvious. But uh, So we're going to start here, though. We're sliding into, it's kind of the same thing over here, sliding into the seventh fret there on the G string. Then up to the tenth fret. And then down to eight, so this. And then pick that eight again. Slide up to 10 and back down to 8. So it is. We kind of do that three times. Now the fourth time, you slide into the 7. Then go up to 12. Then back down to 10. And then slide into nine from below. So it is. Now there's a little overdub. It sounds like it goes. Kind of helps the, the slide. But the slide actually starts coming back in here. But you do hear this. So you can play them on the slide. But I don't think they're actually done on the slide. They're... they're but it kind of helps match the record better if you maybe just go ahead and do it on the slide. So that's seven on the G, and then eight on the B, and then 12. Now here's where the slide part actually starts on the recording. And it's 10 to 12 slide on the B string, and then pick that up to 15, and then pick it down, down to th 13, and then up to 16. So it's a really beautiful melody. Repeat, take it back down, sliding into that from 10 to 12. Now the third time through, you're going to slide that 10 to 12 again on the B. But then from 12 all the way up to 18. And then down to 17 on the B. And then what you're going to do is kind of slide from 12 to 13 on the uh, B string over to 14 on the G. And then we're gonna, that's gonna be slide, picking 14 on the G, slide down to 12, then pick 14 on the G, I'm sorry, the D string, and then back to that 14 on the um, G. So it is. And then, now on the G string, to the 10th fret, then down to 9, and more double stops here. We're going to pick the 5th the fret across the D and the G, and then slide them up to the 7th, so we this. And then, 
keep moving them up one fret there to kind of match. We're doing that in the rhythm part. And then you get the uh, chorus back again there. So that chorus section, uh, sorry, there goes my slide. Good, I hope I broke it. Anyway, so um, we have the, the, after the slide solo, we have the chorus comes back in. So we have the same chorus riff going on. Let me get back on these pickups. <laughs> So got that riff going on. On top of that, we have Slash doing this, comes in with this. So it's pretty easy, it's 9, 8, you can just pull off 9 to 8 on the G, and then 9, 7, he kind of repeats that. Last time, that we're just going to be 9 and 7. Just 9 and 7 done twice instead of 9 and 8. So that's going on, and then we got this crazy section that hits. I call it the trill section. So, what's going on? There's actually a lot of things going on here. Uh, so, you can choose what you want to do, but it's going to, there's like at least like five parts going on here. I can tell you what they do live. Um, so, anyway. We have the more basic rudimentary part, which is what you actually hear kind of the loudest in the recording, which is this. You hear that probably the loudest. So you consider that the main part, even though they don't do that live. So that is just a chromatic line, just. Starting at the fourth fret there on the B string, you just kind of work your way up you know, as the eighth note rhythm. Five, six, seven, and when we get to eight, you start spending less time on each fret. And then when you get to the twelfth fret, you kind of just hit each one once. That goes a lot quicker. So. So what goes on with that? So there's a couple more notes. Sounds like an octave going on off the B doing the same rhythm. So it sounds like one's going. Kind of just matching the, what we did on the B string, but over on the G string, same frets and everything. And then the octave of that. Beneath that B note, starting beneath it. So it's good to kind of just, I don't know if they sp they recorded them separately on the recording, but you could just play them as an octave shape, starting on the B. So the second fret on the A, fourth fret there on the G, and then the same rhythm that we did before, just kind of each one up a fret. And then start speeding up. Quicker. All right, so we've got that going on too. So there really, we have three lines there, but we can do two of them together. All right, so what else is going on besides its parts? Well, we have the parts that they actually play live, which are trills, and they're a little bit lower in the mix. You can hear them. You actually hear the part that, the trills that Richard Fortas does live. You hear those louder on the recording. But we have Slash doing a higher trill, and then Fortas doing a lower trill. So what are the trills? So sl Slash's trills, Pretty, pretty simple concept. Um, we're gonna, this is where it kind of really creates that chaotic sound. We're gonna be trilling between four and three on the B string. And we're just gonna take that up the same timing, fret by fret, that we did the single note. Just run up with that. It's really fun when you get up front, up top. It's not actually. All right, so that is just a simple trill. I just started there and just taking the upper fret. So it should be pretty easy to follow. We're just following the line that we did before. 
Uh, Richard Fortis, you'll see him do it. He does it over on the G string. So same thing. Same timing. Just All right, so you'll see him when he's playing, when Fortis does it, he's got it, he's like, he's kind of... I was like, is he tapping? But I think he's actually just kind of picking in front of it to help it. I, I, don't, I don't think he's actually doing any kind of tapping thing. I can't pick, hear anything. It just sounds like a trill. But, you know, I think you'll see when he's picking, it looks like he's doing some kind of tapping. But I think it's just a continuous trill. He's just picking some of the, kind of restarting it. But um, when I see Slash doing it, he doesn't do it. He's, he, might, he might be picking as well. If you, if you want to pick it, or you can just do a complete legato. So that is really kind of builds up back to the chorus again. So we get to this last chorus section. Yay. All right, now we're, we're at this last thing. So we have Fortis playing the rhythm. And over that, we have Slash doing this. And it kind of goes into a little ending lick. So Fortis is going to end, end it with the chord up here, because that's the first chord. Kind of, he's playing the chord stroke, so he's going to end it here. So we have, uh, at the very end of the song, but we have Slash. First of all, the lick he's doing is 8, 7, 8 on the B over to 9 on the G. So you kind of repeat that sequence or that lick. Over that, over that chorus riff, and then we have this little ending where we go... Which is going to be three two zero on the A string, over to three on the low E, down to the open E, and then three two zero on the low E. And you get the E power chord to end it. All right, and that is it for Hard Schools. There's a lot going on, obviously. Um, a lot of dual guitar parts and riffs and some really cool solos and slide sections, which I hate. Even though they sound amazing, not when I play it, but it's, uh, it's a really nice melody. It's a really nice section in the song. It's just when I hear these slides, I'm like, ah, I gotta do slide. Uh, whatever. Not my thing. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.